right, perfect. All right, everybody, thank you very much. I apologize for not sharing my video, um, but my team's been having issues, as all teams have been having issues, so I'm kind of not tempting fate here. Um, but anyway, hi, everybody. My name is Virgil Carroll, and uh, if you're in the right session, I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about customizing uh, your end user experience in Microsoft Search. So just a couple things here before uh, we start. Um, uh, first, of course, knowing that the next SharePoint conference uh, is going to be coming up here um, uh, in another month, and this is moving nice and slowly right now. Um, or, I'm sorry, not another month, but uh, March 23rd through 25th in 2001. Um, just a quick thank you to our sponsors. I'm sure everybody's done that. Uh, and a little bit about me. My name is Virgil Carroll. I'm the owner and principal human solutions architect at High Monkey in Minneapolis, Minnesota. U.S. of A for everybody that is not here. Uh, we're in the middle of the country. Um, I actually originally hail from the state of Alaska, and I always say that because it's a pretty cool place to be from. Uh, I'm actually celebrating over almost 22 years of being in business, um, and uh, I've been working with websites since 1998, and I've been working actually with SharePoint since 2001. Um, but the first and foremost thing you should know about me is I'm a huge user experience aficionado, uh, which basically means I am really all about the end user experience, which is why I talk about a lot of the things uh, that I'm talking about here. Um, I've been using this slide kind of in every presentation almost I've ever given in my entire life because I think this is a really good grounding for anybody who's never heard me talk about why we kind of talk the way we do about this stuff. And that is that when a person uses search, the person asks a question, some kind of magic happens and the user gets an answer. And the reason that's really important is because a lot of times what happens, especially in search experiences, is we tend to have um, a lot of people not really get what they want out of it because, and so from a technical standpoint, there's so much behind the scenes that happens inside search, but from a user standpoint, it's I ask a question, uh, the Googles, the Bings and all that have kind of ruined people uh, for that reason. So let's talk a little bit about Microsoft Search. So what really is Microsoft Search? Well, that is such a big question because really Microsoft Search in inside itself is a huge ecosystem. Otherwise, I don't really think of um, uh, groups being kind of like, or like Microsoft uh, Search being part of SharePoint or part of Yammer or part of Teams or part of anything else, I think of everything else being part of Microsoft Search. Otherwise, it's this overarching piece that is going to look especially into all of our 365 data, but on top of that, using external connectors and everything else that we're going to be able to use really to kind of be the first global solution that kind of is fully integrated. And this is something that has actually been attempted many times in the past. But Microsoft has taken a very, very interesting approach to this. And I think there's a lot of potential around that. And so um, uh, kind of up here up front, I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about those before I could kind of get into the end user experience and some of the opportunities that we might have with that. So um, first, a little bit behind the scenes. What is Microsoft? really made up of? Well, it's a lot of different parts, and I'm not going to go into them extensively, but underlining one of the biggest things was Microsoft has spent years and years kind of perfecting and, and really making the Bing uh, search ecosystem very, very strong. And this was kind of its opportunity to be able to bring that uh, technology, all the algorithms, all the artificial intelligence and everything behind Bing and really bring it into uh, the 365 sphere, especially. Um, uh, there's things like natural language processing, like Pro Project Lewis, where you can actually go in and, and build kind of more complex queries and do different things. Um, there's a lot of intelligent search and deep learning, like Project Turing, that's another one that's using more cognitive services. There's some other sessions here kind of about a lot of those cognitive services, um, especially from Azure and how those can kind of better understand um, what we are. And then of course, there's still classic search. Yep, fast, it's still there. There's a lot of uh, um, uh, pieces that are gonna be brought in from there as well. Um, so right now, where is Microsoft Search currently available? Well, it's not universal, but it's getting there a little bit more and more all the time. Uh, first and foremost, and when it was first released, it was released as part of Bing. 
Um, and uh, this also includes a LinkedIn integration that you can do, which is kind of interesting. Um, what I'm going to be using today is the search interface from office.com. You could also use the search interface from SharePoint, um, uh, the main SharePoint site, um, uh, or the mobile apps, the Outlook mobile app, which I probably use more religiously than almost anything uh, as far as search there. Uh, the Office apps. Uh, this is the Office apps that are tied directly to 365. I, I uh, just switched laptops just last week, and uh, my desktop version, which was not connected to my 365 account um, from the that I didn't download it from, it was still kind of the old version, and now the new version actually has a search integrated. Um, OneDrive, you can bring it in, and Teams uh, is coming soonish. So uh, that to me is going to be one of the biggest things, especially as much as we're using Teams now. Um, anybody that's ever used Search Inside Team knows that it leaves a little bit to be desired um, from that side. So let's talk a little bit about customizing Microsoft Search and what you can really do from this standpoint um, and uh, what, you know, where our opportunities really lie. So what can we do now with Microsoft Search? Well, honestly, not a whole heck of a lot. Um, what was announced a couple years ago uh, when they first brought Microsoft Search out there and it was business uh, search for Bing, um, they introduced some new features that, that have fundamentally not changed a ton since then. Um, there's a lot of things that are coming down the pike, but right now, as it stands, uh, if you're using out of the box what's available right now, you still have a lot of the new, the same things. You have bookmarks, your ability to kind of add bookmarks uh, that will show up in your search so that you could do things like, you know, getting to your human resources or getting to your benefits plans or maybe uh, there. You have question and answers where you can have a, a question and an answer that could show up inside a search. Um, uh, and then some of the newer things that have been brought as part of this is locations, um, including floor plans where you can actually have um, a, a floor plan inside of it using a CAD drawing, uh, which is kind of interesting and exciting. And then acronyms where you can kind of look at that. And that the acronyms piece where right now you have to kind of create your own acronym and say this word matches this information and that kind of stuff. What's going to be happening kind of down the pipe is that you're going to get a lot more of that automated and a lot more intelligence um, inside that piece. Um, so what will we be able to do soon? Uh, well, first and foremost, we're going to be able to do some customization. Now, I want to say we are, we're going to be able to do customization, but not customization in the way that you're used to. Um, the Microsoft Search experience is very different um, than our classic search experience in the sense that um, they've kind of went a new direction. We're going to talk a lot more about that when we start talking more about adaptive cards and what that really means in that. But some of the things you're going to be able to do is verticals. So what are verticals? Verticals are pretty much um, uh, what in classic search would have been called result sources. It's kind of funny that I'm calling now the fast search stuff classic search, but that's a classic search. So that's going to be the result sources in there. Uh, you're going to be able to do custom refine or something that we don't have access to at all now, even in preview. Uh, result types, which is very much similar to result types um, that are in the classic search, but a little bit different in that you're not really able, at least currently right now, you're not, uh, in, even in preview, you're not able to tie this to any like given uh, type of content and that kind of stuff. Um, and then search results, and you'll be able to do a lot of that there. So there's going to be a lot of customization options uh, in there that are going to be very, very interesting. Um, but you're also going to be able to design this stuff visually, as you can kind of see here on the image um, on the screen, which I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to be able to demo a lot of this stuff, but I'm actually going to use a different editor because, uh, of course, one hour before this, Part of my Microsoft search went down, so I can't actually access the editor inside a search, but I can access it through another way. So I can still show you this stuff, but it's going to use a different editor. What do you do? I mean, you know, how do you do that? Um, but you'll be able to do this. And, and right now, hopefully, if, if Microsoft sticks to its guns, we will uh, be launching this in June 2020. We'll actually start seeing this roll out to different tenants. And so really, the overall power is what's called adaptive cards. So you might remember a couple of slides ago, I was talking about all these different locations that this is available. Well, what is really, really powerful from that side is we're actually having this opportunity to show the same search results everywhere 
contextualized. Otherwise, what's happening is, you know, if I'm in Outlook, I'm going to get it prioritized, the emails and the calendar appointments and stuff there, but it's also going to be searching through my OneDrives, my Teams, my SharePoint sites and everything else like that. So there's going to be all this stuff. And this is really where adaptive cards start coming in because the way something displays in Outlook is a little bit different than the way it displays in Teams, which is a little bit different than the way it say, displays in SharePoint and so on and so forth. So what we're really able to do with this adaptive cards is build these designs so that they will adapt to all these different mechanisms. And we'll kind of take a look at that a little bit here. Um, so what if you're a coder? Well, actually there's a lot you can do right now um, using Microsoft Graph and SharePoint, uh, the SharePoint um, FX. Um, I'm not really gonna go into this because this is not a developer session. Though once you see some of the stuff I'm gonna show you, you might go like, oh my God, this is a developer session. It's not true, but this is going to be, if you had experience working with display templates and their HTML backends and the JavaScript you had to do, this is gonna feel, kind of similar, kind of different, but overall, it's still going to require you to get into some of the guts of some of these pieces uh, from there. But some of the things you can do for that is custom result pages, and then also some query alterations where you could literally kind of adjust queries per site and that kind of stuff. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity down that way. Um, but what if you don't like change? Well, the good news is, and this was something we weren't totally sure about for a while, but kind of in the last six months or so, this is really become clear that uh, Microsoft actually is taking a, a very good direction and that it's actually uh, reutilizing um, a lot of uh, its technology from before. So like I said, a vertical is like a result source. Result types are very similar. It's going to be able to use managed properties. And you're still using the keyword query language, which if you're not familiar with that is what we use actually to build out searches and that kind of stuff inside of um, uh, uh, classic uh, search right now. So being able to use, reutilize all those skills will be really critical because we don't actually have to go through and relearn a lot of that stuff if we already understood how to do some of that stuff uh, in search before. If you didn't, well, then you know you might be looking at there. Well, the other scenario that we see that we think is going to be really huge from kind of this standpoint is going to be the connection of other data and that kind of stuff. So I've actually been in the preview of this technology for the last, I guess, since uh, December. And uh, this is actually the piece that's broken right now, which is making some limits on what I can actually do and can't do here. But this is actually some of the things about being able to connect to external data sources um, uh, from there, including file shares and websites and that. There's actually supposedly when they launch, there's going to be about 70 different connectors available and there's going to be a lot of third party companies that can build their own. But overall, this is going to be able to be bring in external content and be able to do something with it. So um, when's this going to be available? Well, that's hopefully a good question and one I do not have the answer to because it was supposed to be rolled out in uh, January or December, sorry, and, and we're still kind of waiting on that. So that one I don't have a lot of clarity around right now. Um, so what if you like the old and the new? Well, Microsoft Search is gonna be coming to the classic site. So this is not gonna require you just to move to the more modern SharePoint experience. So once this rolls out for classic, you will be able to use this in the classical sense in that we don't have a lot of specifications on exactly how that's gonna work. Again, this is something that's supposedly supposed to launch in June, 2020, but I've seen very little about it. So this one, I'm probably not as hopeful about uh, getting released, but maybe there's some surprises there that, that we'll see. But overall, you're gonna have a lot of things where you, you'll be able to utilize Microsoft Search to scope down to lists and libraries and sites and hubs and your tenants and that. So you'll have a lot more control over that uh, from kind of a site selection uh, standpoint. So how can you build this? Well, first and foremost, uh, as part of kind of the Microsoft Search Admin Center inside of Global Admin, you'll be able to use the layout designer um, that is part of that. That's the piece I'm not gonna be able to show you today, unfortunately, unless I happen to get over there and find out that the connectors are back up and running. Um, uh, but also the one that I am gonna use is uh, they have a really nice site called adaptivecards.io, and this gives you a ton of information about adaptive cards and how it's been used everything from uh, search to teams to, to bots to everything else and how this is kind of the overall framework from that. And they have a nice designer in there, and I'm actually going to use that. Now, this designer in particular actually has a lot more functionality than the one for search, but 
that also means there ha it has some things in it that we actually can't use for search right now. So you kind of have to look at that. Um, and then if you are somebody that is familiar or comfortable, you can use both Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. Um, if you uh, use this, uh, everything is in a JSON packet. Otherwise, it's it's a, um, a, a, a scripting language, and uh, it'll have automatic IntelliSense, so you'll be able to access all the properties and everything in format really well. Um, and Code actually has an extension uh, that somebody built called the Adaptive Card Extension to do visual updates, and I'm actually going to show that a little bit. So I wanted to kind of run through some of that stuff. And what I'm going to really do now is I'm going to break from the slideshow and I'm going to actually switch over to my browser. Um, and I'm going to come over here in that. So um, so where we're at right now is we're actually on my office.com screen. And you'll see that this is very typical search results if you've ever used it at office.com or the main SharePoint page inside your SharePoint system. I've done a search for usability. I'm seeing all my results here. Here is a bookmark that I created at one point um, uh, inside our system, but you can see all the different pieces here. Um, this has some really nice things like um, probably my favorite thing of the whole modern component is it has what I consider a much better document preview uh, than what was part of classic. Um, from that side. So so that's been really big um, from that side. But overall here, but what you're going to see is we have our typical tabs, all files, site, people, news. But what you're going to see right here is you're going to see HM website, which happens to st stand for High Monkey website. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to that. And we're just going to let the query rerun in that. And what you're going to find is you're actually going to find some results that are actually coming from a connector I use to connect to our public website to crawl it and actually bring that data in. And then I use the, ta the, the verticals and the result types to build out um, my templates for this to be able to view it. But you can see here a lot of different things. You see I have some little iconage as part of it. Um, and I can very easily, just as much as I can do um, uh, uh, inside of uh, um, another area I can quickly search on here and see different things uh, from there. So one of the things you'll notice is that some of these have this little hourglass icon on the side and some don't. This denotes a blog post on my site versus something that is just um, a regular page on our site. Um, one thing to note is right now at, in the current iteration, otherwise a lot of this stuff is still in preview, uh, we're just able to see the results here and it actually doesn't come up as part of the contextual uh, piece that comes up here above. That is planned to be changed in the future where you'll actually, so if you're creating your own custom content Content sources, if you're creating your own uh, custom result type templates and displays and that kind of stuff, that'll all be utilized um, going forward um, uh, inside there. So if I'm in my Outlook mobile app and I'm searching for something that happens to meet one of that criteria, I'm going to see it in my Outlook mobile app uh, from the way it is. And so um, just one last piece kind of here about uh, mobile uh, this whole thing with um, uh, with the adaptive cards is part of what the technology of the adaptive cards really is, is that you're actually able to quickly, and I'm sorry, my, and that, uh, oh, of course, that's going to do that right there. Well, that's just being fun today, isn't it? So let's go ahead and, and switch over to a different device here. And you can see that this is being somewhat adaptive, though right now it appears that it's not being as adaptive as it's supposed to be. There we go. We got it right here. And you can see that the card's actually adapting to the individual layouts. So one of the things about the whole adaptive card technology, besides that it'll adapt well to from platform to platform and product to product, it's also that it'll also adapt well when you move from screen size to screen size. So uh, in the way that this is built, kind of almost using the, the front end technology of grid layouts and, and really kind of that thing and how that works with bootstrap and, and foundation and all those kind of uh, CSS frameworks. Uh, it really is about adapting to the environment which it goes into. The difference between an adaptive card and that is that it can actually go much, much further than that and include uh, interactive fields as well. So to kind of start off our journey, 
uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. So nobody's going to see this inside their own tenant because this is part of preview. You can see connectors are in preview. And you can see right here, this is what I'm getting. An error has occurred. So there are no connectors in that. And so there's basically three components of it. So you create a connector. Um, and I'm not going to be able to create one right now. But you can see here, just like the screen that I showed on the slide deck, I could easily do that. I connected to my website. I do my settings inside there. Once a connector is created and it's actually crawled your content, then you create what's called a vertical from that. And so you can see right here that I have a vertical. Um, this, uh, I'm going to try and see if it'll load, but I'm assuming it will not because it did not load just a little bit ago. Um, but a vertical is basically, like I said, it's a result source. So you're saying, here's all my data that's coming back in my crawl. And now here's the either the entire data set, or maybe it's a subset of data or whatever it is that I want to present is part of this vertical in here. So anything that I set up from, from filters to maybe excluding URLs or whatever it could be is going to reflect on the core. Otherwise, when I do a search, I'm only going to search against that limited set of data, uh, which is really critical. And you can see that that's actually not going to come up. So I apologize for that one, um, but that actually wasn't going to do. So you have some very basic things where you select the, the, the data source, which is in this case going to be the connector that I had built, um, and then you can set some rules like uh, extracting there, and you can set properties that are available. Um, right now, all the properties that are available are pretty much out of the box, what's there um, from that side. So once you build that, then you actually go to a result type. So I actually uh, was able to get this one open earlier, even though you see the content source was removed. So this is what you're seeing as an issue. But this at least allows us to be able to look here and, and for you to see it. So you're giving it some kind of a name um, you, where the content source is. So that's coming from that vertical that, that uh, uh, I created. And then you see that I have a couple of URL rules in here. Um, which is very typical to the way you set up these type of rules, um, uh, which is does not contain anything under the path blog, doesn't contain anything under the path search. And so the reason I did, and then lastly, before I click out of this, you'll see this really, really long JSON area in that. And so when you actually start working with this, there's two ways you can do it. If you're a, you're a person who likes to work with code, you can do this all in code. And it's got a very uh, straightforward-ish type format to follow, though also very intimidating, especially if you're not very familiar with JSON. But if I was to be able to ed edit this, which I can't currently, when you get to that edit screen, you'll also get um, a, a button to be able to go to the visual layout designer. So when you go to the visual layout designer, you can do this in a visual format, though there's still, I, I don't want anybody to get me wrong, there's still steps that you have to do as a person. You have to fundamentally know what you're doing there to be able to get those connections because it's just not uh, simple enough that, that you can do it um, from there. So you'll see that I've set up two result types here. Uh, the first being um, uh, web item, which I'm using basically for just, like I said, all the pages on my site. And then I set up a separate one for all the blogs. So if anybody's ever worked with result types, this would be very typical of maybe we wanted to show an Excel spreadsheet versus differently than a, uh, a, a Word document. Uh, we'll typically use this and that we'll tie them to content types that we've set up in sites or site collections, and we'll display those differently um, uh, in a different way, or, or you know, maybe you're giving us some kind of different icon like I did over here, or something so that you are visually differentiating uh, some of the things you can do. But overall, once you kind of create these, then you can also create the priority. Otherwise, which one fires first? And so the reason you might want to do some prioritization is if you had something that if this, this condition gets met, um, do this. But if not, then do that. Um, you kind of have to play around with those. Um, one thing that I'm not super excited about this right now um, and kind of hoping that maybe in, in one of the pieces of feedback that I gave is there's somewhat a disconnect between the connector, the verticals, and that, and that this is all. So if I had 500 of these, this is going to be one massive 500 uh, item list. This is going to be, you know, 50 verticals and, and 25 connectors or whatever like that. So from an administrative standpoint, it'd be a lot nicer if you kind of had that 
here's the base connection, here's the verticals that are attached to it, and here's the result types that are attached to that. One of the reasons I did this, and actually a very important thing, is that one of the things coming down the pipe is what is called uh, adaptive card templating. And so what that means basically is eventually you're going to be able to build adaptive cards that could be used for multiple sources and not just a single source. So there's going to be some pieces there. So there's really a lot that are going inside here. So if we're going to build this out, what we have to do is we have to build these out um, uh, in a designer. So like I said, I, I was hoping to show the, the built-in Microsoft Search Designer, which is kind of, I'll just say, a watered-down version of what you're seeing here. Um, but overall, that's not working right now. So uh, I'm using the one that is an adaptivecards.io uh, slash designer. Uh, by the way, I meant to mention this up front. For any of these things that I'm showing, I have a slide at the very end of my session or at the end of my slide deck that has links to all these things. So uh, I know we're gonna be sharing out the slide deck somewhere. Uh, so all the links will be there so you don't have to scramble to try and write this stuff. Um, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through this a little bit again, if you do this just for the search, um, uh, some of these things are not available, but basically there, there's kind of three um, main components of an adaptive card. Uh, the first being the fields and the, the kind of containers for those fields that you can add inside there to display or do different activities inside there. <coughs> the second is the layout, otherwise how it's going to lay out on the screen. And the third is how the data connects into that. Um, behind the scenes, so how the data, data connects into that, and so all the behind the scenes pieces that actually fit in there. So I'm going to kind of walk through each of these just a little bit and kind of give you a little understanding of what we're going to do um, from that side. So one of the first things about it is is that um, you'll see here up here with this one you have you can select a host app. So one of the things you can see here, and search actually is not part of this, but you can quickly change this and you can actually see how this potentially um, would display in another um, uh, device. So like if this was an uh, actionable message inside of Outlook, that's how it would display. If this was gonna show in Microsoft Teams, this would be how it would do as a bot inside Microsoft Teams. Uh, if you want to see how it'd show on Windows Timeline, you could see how it'd show there. Um, if you wanted to see how it, it can do um, uh, inside a Windows notification, you can see how it do there. But you basically have this kind of uh, ability to change this. Now, when you're actually in the search one itself, you only have searches and availability, but realize that part of what the whole adaptive card piece is really trying to do is kind of really take this to the next level and, and do something new and, and different. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of these so that I can kind of focus on here. So what you're gonna see here in the layout area, um, you'll see that all those kind of had different layouts. Well, there's one thing that search kind of lacks that's very important up front, and I don't know if they're gonna end up fixing that or changing that before, um, uh, they actually release it, but I'm going to assume not. And that um, in this designer and in this layout for this bot framework, which I'm just using, it, it's not for any significance whatsoever. Um, I could extend this layout basically down as far as I want to go. I have this infinite area that I could add fields and do things, drag and drop things in and, and kind of add that in there. Um, inside search right now, you'll actually see, let me see if I've got a good example here of one that, oh, of course, everything on this guy, maybe right there, nope. Uh, you'll see right here is that actually right now, currently in search, um, we actually have a finite amount of space, vertical space that we can use. So you can see here like my keywords down here that are normally here, you can just barely see them on top of this. Now in the designer itself, you'll actually see that we have some ability to add what are called actions. Um, and an action, one of the actions is a toggle visibility, which is something similar to what you can do over here where you can see that you're seeing a little snippet of something and then you can open it up uh, and actually see something more if there was more information to do that. Uh, right now, 
um, where that actually is available on the search designer in the preview, it actually doesn't work. So um, let's hope that it'll be there, but there is an intention that uh, hopefully you'll be able to expand these, you'll be able to do things, but actions aren't really just limited to expanding. You could also have it go to some kind of custom URL uh, if you wanted to. So if you were like um, uh, showing like a report of information or something like that, and you wanted them to be able to go off to different systems or something based off that information. So you could have something that's coming out of a, a different document management system and you wanted to create a link specific to that document management system versus, um, or, or a document information panel or something like that. So you have a lot of different options there. So I'm just gonna walk through real quick here and, and kind of show you the fundamentals of what you do um, uh, here. So you don't have to use any of these, but some of these things are relatively uh, important. So a container is where you can kind of um, just like an image set. So a container would be something where you're grouping like-minded things. So you can see like right here, um, I added a container on the screen that holds both um, my description field and then also um, holds the icon that I added for the blog post there. And really a container from the standpoint, uh, you'd really use for two reasons. Um, and that includes an image set, which is really a container for images, a fact set, which we'll talk about a little bit more, which is for a set of uh, facts and a column set, which is really um, uh, a set of columns. So uh, right there, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But overall, a container is about groupings and about control. So like, let's say that uh, down the road, I wanted an action that um, until I actually uh, clicked on some type of an expand button, I didn't want to show the keywords here. I could have that in container. I can give that container an ID. And then from that ID, I could show hide that ID. Um, uh, as part of it. So one of the things you can see here is that when I have my container, I actually have, um, uh, um, oh, why isn't it showing there? Oops, let me get my card structure out here. Um, you can see that I'm, uh, where is that? I think here is where I want. No, oh, it's not there. I can actually set an ID much like if anybody has ever worked with um, uh, kind of JavaScript or, or really any type of front end HTML, you can give it an ID and you'll be able to target that ID with different things that you can do inside of it. Um, you can tell that when you actually access these things, there's a ton of different stuff um, inside there that you can do um, uh, to be able to do that. And um, this does have a very uh, a good kind of, um, uh, SDK where you can actually look at a lot of these different pieces that you can look at into here. So you can look at how you can space it, how you can do alignment, how you do height, what kind of style the, the text goes to, do you want a background image in the area, what type of actions are going to happen from it. And the reason this is kind of important is because you're going to see that this is a lot more select, a lot more kind of do that versus uh, do any type of custom CSS or HTML or anything like that. And that's a very important piece because overall one of the keys kind of to adaptive cards is that you're really using things um, in a very consistent fashion so that if you're moving from device to device or, or product to product, you're getting an overall consistent experience. Where I'm sure there's gonna be some people uh, from a visual standpoint that are gonna feel like that doesn't really do it for them uh, overall. Um, that is something that uh, will really kind of give us the benefit of making sure that this is overall compatible from that side. So you have a lot of different controls on here. Um, so I'm gonna just, just for giggles, I'm gonna go ahead and this is a column set. And if you listen to the name, it's exactly what it is. It basically creates it. So now you can see I have a column set and I can add a column in there. So now you see over here, I've added a column. And now I can add two columns, I can add three columns, I can add four columns, I can do whatever I want. Um, and then inside those things, I can drag in different fields, just like you'd expect. So now I've got inside this, I've got an image. I can set up where that image points to. One thing to note is that this is a little bit different than probably what you used to in the past. As of right now, you can't like select from a SharePoint library or anything like that. You're gonna actually have to have some type of URL for this. Now, if you happen to be bringing that data in with the, the um, 
uh, vertical that you're working with, you obviously could map this to a field and that kind of stuff. But you can kind of do this whole thing and kind of map this and make it out. So up here, you can see actually um, right here, I'm actually using a column set of two columns. Uh, in one column, I have um, my image, which you can see I have the full full, full URL to that. Um, and uh, great for Microsoft finally to make it out of the box to be able to add alternate text. Uh, for accessibility, um, and then also my title field. Now, one of the things I want to note here is that this is something that you see here is how my text is laid out there. Well, that actually on that side is how I reference the fields that came out of the vertical that are the properties that I had available. So for like a website, I have my title, I have my URL, I have a um, uh, description that is available, um, and then I have a keywords field. Uh, that is available as well. So um, from that, I'm able to quickly be able to map that. And then when it runs inside search, it then knows that, you know, this is the title field for this uh, page. Here's a description. There's the, the keywords for that page, uh, et cetera, et cetera, um, from that side. So once you kind of do this, you can kind of organize things any way you want it. You can drag any type of box in here. Um, there's really a lot of different pieces in here. The only thing that you're seeing on here, two things that you can't currently do inside search. One is media. Um, you don't have the ability to do media right now in search, though I'm sure that's coming. And all these inputs in that. So realize this adaptive card builder is not only about displaying things, but it's also for other applications where you might do interactive things like have somebody, you know, have a chat bot inside Teams where somebody would open up a form and real quick and answer a question or something like that. So it kind of takes it. But everything else right here that you can utilize inside there. Um, so what you're going to really need to do is you're going to need to go to this site and you really you need to go into Let's see if it comes in, into the schema and really kind of explore all the different things you can do here. And if you say, oh my God, Virgil, this is just completely overwhelming. You are not incorrect in that assumption. There is a lot to this, um, but that's part of it is that it makes it very powerful. Um, you can kind of see where our designers are getting already, and you've got to kind of imagine that that's going to be something that's going to be tackled a little bit more uh, from that side. So you have a lot of ability to be able to do this um, uh, and kind of make that difference. So on top of that, the other way I said that you could do that is you can actually do this inside of Visual Studio Code. Um, and so the reason I wanted to switch over to this real quick to kind of show you is that um, you're actually going to get um, uh, a more raw view. But actually, as I said, there's a plugin for that where you can actually see this preview on here. This isn't an interactive designer where I can drag and drop fields. But now if you want to work inside the code, um, you can do that. And for anybody who is uh, familiar with JSON, you can kind of start to see the progression right here of a column set. There's a column. I put another column set inside that. I put a column. There's my logo. There's my UR title with URL and putting that inside there. Um, and then here is my description uh, field inside the container that I said. And then alongside that, I also have my search strategy um, uh, icon that I'm using over here for my blogs um, and everything that goes in there. Um, and then I have a fact set. And I'm sorry, I, I, I did kind of gloss over this a little bit. So a fact set is kind of one of those interesting things where you think of like, um, let's say that you had um, you know, metadata or data that you wanted to show. So now you're showing, you know, for a particular thing, you're showing the title, you're showing a description, but now you have all these managed properties that you brought in, maybe like the, the author's name, the, the date it was last published, you know, um, uh, something about the, key, the keywords that's involved with it or the, the place that it's in in a workflow and that kind of stuff. As long as you have that data, sometimes you just want to present that as, Here's the, here's the name of the field, here's the data, here's the name of the field, here's the data, here's the name of the field. So you can kind of do this, and basically a fact set is just a linear list. It's just a linear top to bottom, and it's going to be adaptive, and it actually creates a table inside here. Um, but from this side, if you're going to look at it, you can actually do this from behind the scenes and actually create it. So one thing you'll see is that any settings that I actually set in the designer are set here, so how I set the width, 
what's inside there, how I set my alignments, my alt text, what style. So interestingly, um, uh, there's two styles for um, uh, an image. The first is default, which is going to be a square. The person one is going to put rounded corners around it. So just kind of interesting, but that's actually our icon is rounded corners. So that kind of worked out. Well, that, but you can see like from from the, the text block side where we're showing this, what size do I have? And you can see that you have small, default, medium, large, extra large. You know, what's the weight of the font? Um, but the last part I want to kind of mention here um, that I think is kind of critical to this is also looking at um, some of the things you can do. It. I'm actually going to switch back over to the designer here because I think you'll be able to see it there. Um, uh, a little bit better. And so part of what you can do here is you can do what's called a when. And that, so this is kind of a, a basic example would be something like, you know, this is basically saying as long as the title field is not empty, then show this, otherwise it's not going to show at all in that. And so there's some logic that you can kind of build in that actually comes uh, behind the scenes. Um, and you can see that all this is getting built out kind of behind the scenes and you can just copy and paste it um, into that location that I was talking about. Um, and you can kind of go through uh, and do that kind of stuff. I, I've uh, started, they actually have a pretty sophisticated um, uh, kind of uh, function language for um, the adaptive cards, but a majority of that appears at least right now not to work for uh, search. It appears you kind of have not equal to, equal to, greater than, that kind of stuff. But there's a lot more functions that hopefully are coming along that where you could do much more complex queries. Because originally what I was doing was I was trying not to do um, these as uh, uh, two separate pieces here. Oops, sorry, let me switch back over. It's two separate pieces, but actually do them one and then conditionally show um, this image uh, if it was down the path of blog or not. And I couldn't make that work and, and none of the functions would work and that kind of stuff. Um, a couple other caveats just to kind of let you know about, uh, again, this being in preview, but just kind of knowing kind of how the technology somewhat works behind the scenes uh, are kind of assumed that they are going to be very much the way that things are going to happen overall um, is going to be um, updates are not instantaneous. So when you actually deploy these, those things don't show up in your searches like automatically. Obviously in 365, there's a ton of different things that have to go on behind the scenes to actually make everything work and show up and, and everything else. So there, there's a lot of effort that has to go into that. So uh, right now I see everything showing up anywhere between say uh, a minute to about every five to 10 minutes uh, and that kind of stuff. And the interesting thing is actually I see new data show up sometimes before I see new layouts and that probably has a little bit to do with the page caching side of things and that uh, as well but you should always be prepared which is why uh, even if I could have done this through search I wouldn't have made any live changes because it would be our guess whether it actually show up in time uh, to do all that kind of stuff. Um, the other thing is is that you have to make sure that you really understand what can work inside search versus what can work inside everything else. This adaptive card site is wonderful, but there are several things in here that actually do not work in search. And unfortunately, at least at this point, they do not uh, share with you exactly what works with what type of card. So you kind of have to go off the basis of what you see uh, in the search piece itself. So um, let's just make sure that my connector still hasn't come up because I would have loved to have shown you the rest, but it doesn't look like there. So, um, so let's go ahead and switch back to my slides in there. So because it looks like I got about six minutes left um, uh, in the session. Um, so I showed you a lot. I really tried to figure out what the heck could you put about this in 50 minutes to actually help people. And hopefully this is giving you an overall understanding of some of the things you can and can't do. Um, ideally, um, uh, down the road, we'll have more time to be able to look at these things a little bit more in depth and that, but really need to wait until it's kind of more at a release level. And this kind of gives you an idea. Um, is this going to take time? Yes, it is. 
Um, anybody who ever worked with SharePoint 2013 and above with, with the display template process and all that, it took time to learn, it took time to understand. Um, I will tell you one thing that, that is very beneficial from the adaptive card side is you get visual feedback right away. Anybody who knew how it was with display templates, you had to do it, you had to upload it to the template gallery, you had to publish it, then you had to go to your page and sometimes it updated right away, sometimes it didn't, and then it'd give you um, many times a an error message that meant nothing to you and that uh, the adaptive card technology, at least what I've played with, tends to give you a lot more visual feedback about what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So before you actually deploy those cards, you're actually understanding whether you have a typo in there or whether something's not going to process right, which is really nice from that. But no matter what, this is going to take some time for people really to understand and to be able to work through uh, and that kind of stuff. Um, and Microsoft has a lot of things coming down the pipe. I mean, my gosh. It, it's just crazy if, if anybody paid much attention to Ignite last year, just all the stuff that they have. Microsoft Search is such a huge endeavor for Microsoft and what they're trying to do here. And it really is something that I say is, is truly has the opportunity to connect everything together. Um, of course, first and foremost, more connectors, you'll be able to connect to a lot of different things. Uh, one of our assumptions, and I, I have not yet seen it, but I mean, I, I'm gonna be kind of surprised that you can't, is when you can build these custom verticals, you'll be able to do them against SharePoint sites and teams and, and all those kind of things now which is right now uh, I can only do it against external data. Um, more contextualized natural language processing search. So the AI side of this is gonna be really critical, not only in the way that, that Microsoft uh, Search does it in itself and, and the, the utilities, but some of the power that you're gonna have over time to be able to go in there. Um, and then some of the integrations and stuff with Project Cortex, which is actually going to be talked about here in about 10 minutes um, uh, as the next keynote. Uh, if you haven't checked out Project Cortex, text i really recommend it it's 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 crazy it's cool it's got a lot of opportunity with it and uh just like it's really driving kind of modern taxonomy which is going to be a huge part of search search is a huge part of what project cortex is so it's all really brought together and, and it really connects there um so after our rollout, what are some things that um, we might be able to do? Well, that's a, you know, it's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, a couple of things that I kind of assume is that um, uh, as long as we can add this to our own page, we'll probably be able to do hacks at our own CSS, at our own scripts and that kind of stuff. There's already mechanisms built inside kind of the templating structure for you to more target those type of things. So I, I believe that since we can put IDs on items and that, that we could actually target them with specific styles that maybe we don't have an opportunity. So you'll have more of an ability to customize it kind of on your own page. Um, uh, and then open source templates, I think, you know, the one thing we have an opportunity here that could be very different than what kind of happened in the world of classic SharePoint search is that I, I think there's such a robust community out there. I see people probably putting some templates out there. The only thing out of this whole thing that you did not get to see was that when you actually go to the layout designer, uh, Microsoft gives you about 10 different layouts out of the box that you can kind of start with um, uh, right off the bat and everything's kind of mapped out and set up for you and you can just make modifications of those. For most people, that's probably going to be overall good enough, um, uh, but for some, it, it, they may need more. Um, if you want to do something now, if you can't wait or if June rolls around and we hear nothing, um, I highly recommend that you look at the PMP Modern Search Solution. Uh, like I said on my last slide, I have a link to this. Um, this is an open source project that has a lot of power to it, um, including a lot of the ways we're going to do things in modern from search web parts. Uh, query enhancements, natural language processing, custom displays, and all this. Um, and this is a great way to tide us over for Microsoft Search uh, is ready or or good enough to go in that. Um, I deploy this in a lot of companies inside their tenants um, because it's just a much better experience in that, and it uses a lot of the familiarity with it. If you haven't gotten a chance to take a look at it, I really do recommend that you do that um, and take a look at it, the people. Uh, it's an open source product, project, but it's also uh, somewhat supported by Microsoft. Off. Um, but overall, it's it's just an amazing solution, and I always uh, tip my hat to the people that do so much work on these type of things for basically no compensation whatsoever. Uh, so like I promised, I, I will uh, have all these links in my slide deck, uh, including I have some links to a couple of uh, the Ignite sessions uh, that uh, kind of inspired a lot of what's happening now, um, and to the adaptive cards and the modern search. So. I'm literally at time right here, so don't forget, 
if you want to, you can join the raffle. Um, uh, and uh, hopefully you'll uh, win one of these Oculus Quests, which I think would be really cool. Um, and then thank you very much. Uh, do make sure. So thanks. Thanks for being on time. There are a couple of questions uh, which are added. Can you can take, take a look on, look on those? We, we will have additional five minutes for answering those questions. Sure. Uh, yep. OK, ah, there we go. I that's why my 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 thing wasn't scrolling. Uh, can you? Uh, oh, let me. How many do I want to go back there? Uh, when so, will uh, refiners be available? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll kind of walk through these. Uh, that's a great question. That's supposed to be part of uh, the um, uh, um, the uh, June release is supposed to be refiners, um, but we actually haven't seen much about that yet. So um, not totally sure. Um, uh, I'm like you, I'm very helpful for that, but I wouldn't be surprised even if they do end up releasing something that that ends up being a little bit different. Uh, when is it actually going to be released? Well, your, your guess is as good as mine. Um, uh, I really do think that they've been pretty heads down with this, but I have not heard anything uh, about the June rollout, um, but it also hasn't changed uh, since they put June um, about four months ago. So uh, hopefully we'll know a little bit more next month, um, but uh, I don't have it. Uh, can you hide OneDrive items from MS Search? Right now you will not be able to. Down the road you should be able to, especially as you can customize the search for yourself. <coughs> you should be able to do it. Actually, when it was first being for business, you could, <coughs> excuse me, you could actually exclude uh, Teams results uh, or OneDrive results out of there, um, uh, but they they took that away and and that'll come back in some way. Would it be possible to get data from external data sources? Ah, I see somebody asked that in the middle. Yes, that's actually a huge part of this is being able to connect to all kinds of different external data sources. Um, and I'm not sure if this is a Azure blob. I haven't heard anything about Azure blobs, but I can imagine that if Microsoft is creating connectors that they're not gonna have a lot of things connected into the Azure ecosystem uh, themselves. Uh, can you create verticals for specific content types in SharePoint? Yes, you will be able to, uh, with Microsoft Search, you'll be able to target things. Um, not totally sure how we're gonna do it, but since we're gonna be able to use the keyword query language, um, my assumption is that we'll be able to uh, do it much like we do in classic search and be able to target those content types once they're made available to Microsoft Search. Will refiners be available as well? Yes, I cannot tell you how excited I am about that. Uh, from there, and will you be able to connect to an on-premise SQL Server database? Okay, yes, you can, and actually the way that works uh, right now inside of it, uh, once the connectors get released, so so you got to understand that the customization of the search results and the connectors in my preview are connected together, but they're actually two separate products, and the reason is, is because the only way you can th see things through connectors is by using the, the kind of initial version of the, 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 the customization stuff. So uh, whether the connectors will get rolled out at the same time, I'm not sure, but once you are able to do it, uh, Microsoft actually has an agent that you will download to a server inside your environment. That agent will do a secure encrypted connection up into your 365 environment, and that'll basically enable your 365 environment to basically kind of map to any on premise using an extremely secure connection. Um, uh, I've set it up, I've got it running. Couldn't even show you that right now because nothing's working, but um, uh, it's a little bit of a learning curve and, and had a few bugs, but uh, they got it all fixed. And uh, so, yep, you're gonna be able to do that, which I think is one of the most significant things. Uh, and it'll be something that you'll have the ability to manage, turn off and turn on uh, in that kind of stuff. And one thing you'll notice that I think is also significant from that kind of connection standpoint is that you probably noticed that my search results still worked, even though my connector has been stopped. Um, and there's some issue with that. And that's actually really significant because what's actually happening is um, uh, much like in a search, the, the, the uh, index is separated from what's actually being crawled and nothing gets pushed into the index until everything is successfully done. So even if you would disconnect that SQL server, you're gonna still have it in the index. So you're gonna have to kind of manage that process, but also know that if you're having connectivity issues, that's not gonna be a challenge either. So. And that. Well, thank you everybody very much. I appreciate it. I'm uh, glad I was able to talk with you and <coughs> excuse
excuse me, have the first successful session in this room.